Hey everybody, it's Marcus. Welcome back. I'm here with an update. As you may remember, about three weeks ago, we did a video on Tesla's virtual power plant. And in that three weeks, we've had 10 events. It's also been hot, spicy ghost pepper summer hot. It's been above 105 here for about 10 days. 115, 116 was the high the other day in Sacramento. That's an all time high. So I figured this would be a good time to do a video on the virtual power plant. Uh, some details that I've picked up along the way. Uh, just as a reminder, I did that video about three weeks ago. If you're looking for anything on the basics, what to expect, compensation, how your system's gonna act, I go back and watch that video. I'll link that here or maybe down there in the comments. Um, otherwise, this video is just gonna be on some of the issues that kind of came up or things that I thought about. Uh, so let's go from there. So before we get into the statistics, on Twitter I got some kind of common questions and threads, things I thought I would address in this video um, that might be helpful to other people. Um, the first one being setting your reserve level. So if you go to your settings, you're going to see that reserve level. It can be that slider that's anywhere from 0 to 100%. You're going to have to decide before a virtual power plant event what you think is worth it. If you set that backup reserve to 0%, you're gonna make the most money, You know, potentially empty your power walls into the grid. However, at the same time, if you have an outage, you're also gonna have the least amount of energy to protect yourself from being out of power. So you need to weigh if that's worth it or not. We did have an event during this heat wave, the, the hottest day when it was 115, uh, where the town uh, south of us lost power. And they lost power for three hours. So I was sitting there during the event going, hmm, should I, should I increase the reserve percentage? But we didn't lose power. Another important thing to check is, are you on a rotating outage? You can go to PG&E's website and check the rotating outages to see if your block is there. Thankfully, we're right next to a hospital where we live, so we're actually exempt from these rotating outages. So we got really lucky on that one. So I do tend to just export everything my batteries to the grid during a virtual power plant event. With that being said, we also had a blip, you know, kind of a, an outage per se during one of these power plant events. I don't know if somebody hit a transformer, you know, down the road or what happened, but we actually lost power while we were cooking. The lights dimmed down, the air fryer kind of paused for a second, but kept on going. So it was a close one. Um, but anyways, when that happened, I actually had the app in, uh, open and you can see here that it disconnected from the internet and it actually, despite it saying that it was sending to the grid, it actually wasn't. Uh, it had just stopped at that point. I think that was just kind of a bug from the internet, not updating from losing power, um, unfortunately. Once the internet came back, the grid was actually still up, so we didn't actually need to stop exporting, and we just continued exporting again like nothing had happened. So that was just kind of an interesting thing that happened during that, uh, that outage. Now another thing I want to talk about too is twofold. It's discharge behaviors and it's the importance of reducing your usage. So let's start off with reducing your usage. You know, California is always tweeting, it's a flex alert, you know, reduce your usage from 4 to 9 p.m. And then the um, CA ISO starts putting out these alerts and warnings that we need to reduce our usage. So why is that so important? Um, as you can see here, if you go to that CA ISO group uh, website, it will show you the demands and the net demand trend. And you can see here just how close it gets and even on those days, um, where there are demand response events, we get really close to overloading the grid. Um, but anyway, so you're thinking like, oh, I'm just one house, what difference will it make? Well, here you can see in an energy graph, here's our usage during that power plant event. We went from using AC right beforehand, you know, pre-chilling the house, and then during the event, it drops way, way down, and that just, aggregated effect of everybody reducing their usage is what helps in that in that graph that you'll see there of dropping that demand so that we don't overload the grid. Now with that being said, during a virtual power plant event, our power walls seem to have this discharge behavior. Mine tend to peg themselves at this 14.2 kilowatt discharge rate. Um, it seems to be about 4.7, 4.8 kilowatt discharge, uh, I'm guessing per power wall. Um, that it tries to keep constant. Now, say the AC turns on during an event, 
or we start cooking or use the microwave or air fryer, the Powerwalls do output more than that 14.2, but they cover the house load and it generally just stays at 14.2 to the grid. Now, if you start getting way, way into it, what you're gonna end up seeing is that what you send back to the grid starts to decrease. I'm not sure what that level is, but that just goes with the importance of reducing your usage during these times. It's not that you're uh, using the electricity because you're not you're not using the grid essentially when you're running off of batteries during a virtual power plant event but it's kind of that lost revenue um, as you can see here we had a day where our AC had the capacitor go out so we had somebody come to fix it so I thought hey it's not worth it let's uh, let's just let the AC run during the event the house wasn't pre chilled beforehand it was already 80 in the house and you can see here we lost about 10 kilowatt hours or so to the house load during the event. Now 10 kilowatt hours, not that much, but when you think about it, that's $20 during an event. $2 per kilowatt hour, 10 kilowatt hours that went to the AC, 20 bucks. So a little bit of discomfort goes a long way in your compensation later. Now you're gonna have to decide, is that worth it? I don't know. Now here's the meat and potatoes that everybody's been waiting for. We had 10 events in that three week span starting August 17th until September 9th. Those 10 events totaled 26 hours of virtual power plant events. And during those 26 hours, our system sent back 297.1 kilowatt hours to the grid. That should be, according to Tesla's rate, $594 in compensation for our 10 events. That's pretty good, about $60 an event, you know, roughly, about $20 an hour or so, $20 to $25 an hour. That is fantastic. Now, I know some of you are saying, hey, Mark, this is incremental. Uh, so basically, you're going to have a baseline that you normally send back to the grid, and that's going to be reduced from what you send back to get your actual compensation. Now, for our house, we have all east-facing panels, so they're always producing during non-peak, and we very, very, very rarely produce during peak. We're usually at that point either taking the solar to run the house load because we're in self-power mode and then supplementing with the batteries, or if we are giving back to the grid, it's just minute, minute amounts, maybe a tenth of a kilowatt hour. So that's why I'm so easily able to say we should be getting $594 in compensation. So that's pretty awesome. I think going forward that we're probably not going to see many more events this year. I'm hoping that we're going to actually get some cooling here going into the fall. Um, you know, hopefully it won't stay in the hundreds in September here as it was. It does tend to stay hot, so we will use AC even as our production is going down here. Now, 600 bucks in compensation for three weeks of essentially not doing too much is pretty awesome, but I don't see this really being sustainable. Now, when I say sustainable, I mean, I don't think we're gonna have five or six virtual power plant events going forward as it starts to get cool. I think this was an exception, having 110 degrees, being the beta, and then being able to test out the system to see how well it worked. I think it works really well but I just think it won't be utilized all the time. And if so, I don't think our reimbursement rates are gonna be as good as they typically, or as good as they are right now. Um, but we'll see going forward. Uh, again, if you have any questions, please let me know anything about the virtual power plant that maybe I can answer, anything you see about our system that you have comments, concerns, or whatever on, let me know. Uh, as always, you can self-refer yourself for a system you can get panels, you can get batteries, and you can get $300 off. You can always use your own referral link. But if you need a referral link, look down below for mine in the comments. Feel free to use it. Let me know you use it. Say thank you. Let me know. Awesome. Hope you guys enjoy. We'll see you for the next video. Have a good one.